Hey guys, uh, I'm back again, and the title of this video is called I'm Mad at You for Not Fulfilling My Expectations. Now, you know the videos that I send forth, I, I send um, from personal experience um, issues that I've dealt with personally, or I am dealing with, um, and, you know, tips that I believe God gives me, but I don't want to be like the man that you know, received a talent, and then because of whatever reasons, because he said that his master was hard, he was a hard man, or, or and stuff, and he was afraid, and so he he put his talent into the ground, and then gave it to him at the uh, at the time when the the, the master. Um, came back to, you know, receive the talents for which he entrusted his servants with. I want to be, I don't want to be like that man that, you know, keeps the talent to himself greedily. I, I believe that God gives us gifts that we need to share with each other. Um, God gives us the wisdom in which we can lift our brother and sister up who are having a hard time. So, with me, you know, putting these videos forth, um, I believe it's, you know, God's way of me trying to help my brothers and sisters. You know, if there's anything that I, I send forth in a video, I pray that it releases any kind of shackles that this world may put on you. Um, that is basically you know, why I feel the need to constantly put videos out. Because if there's anything that I know that can help somebody, I want to do that. So, um, I'm going to get to this video. Once again, the, the, the title of this video is called, I'm mad at you for not fulfilling my expectations. And expectations, um, you know, they really can set somebody up for failure. Because... You have in your mind, um, like preconceived notions about, um, how you expect something to be done or how you expect somebody to do it. And if they don't do it in the time that you give or in the way that you want it done, then in your mind, they have failed you. And, you know, man can't handle failure. I know personally with me in the past, I couldn't, it was something that was very hard to deal with. And when I failed at something, I, I would, you know, condemn myself. I would harshly criticize myself and call myself stupid. And really that doesn't bring any fruit. It doesn't bring fruit in my own life and it doesn't bring fruit in anybody else's life. So it's something that, um, I can no longer do. Um, I need to stop myself before I get to that place to where I would criticize myself. All right, so let's lead to the first question. How often do we get mad at people for not reading our minds? And you, you see that a lot. And our pre-planned expectations. Uh, we see that a lot of times in marriage where... You know, your spouse gets angry at you for not being able to read their minds. Um, sometimes we get upset at our spouses for not knowing our intent, what's in our mind. Um, one second, let me think more on this. And you've heard from different things, whether TV, internet, or whatever, about uh, a certain spouse saying, well, I shouldn't have to state it. You should already know. And really, you can't expect people to read your mind. You can't expect people to do what you think they should do. You need to voice it out exactly what you're thinking. Maybe not so much as through the flesh, but sometimes you may need to think more on something before you express it. Um... So, like I, uh, I just said, how often do we get mad at people for not reading our minds and our pre-planned expectations? 
we have expectations all mapped out about what's going to happen, you know, whether throughout the day. Um, you may have certain plans about what you're expecting. Maybe you're setting up a date night when those things don't happen like you wish they would. You get all upset. You possibly get all upset. I know for me personally, in the past when I get upset, I keep it to myself and I don't express it. In my mind, I think, what's the point of expressing it? And I don't believe there's going to be any kind of change. And so that's the wrong notion anyone should have. Um, if you're married, maybe you have expectations of time alone with your spouse at a certain time. When it doesn't happen, how do you react from that? Um, perhaps we have an expectation of, uh, uh, the way our, our partners to behave. We want them to behave in a certain way. Um, one second, I'm about to go into examples. Now, before I was married, I want to look around, make sure nobody's listening to what I'm saying outside the car. Um, before I was married, I had the thought, and maybe it was an expectation, that when I was married, that I would be intimate with my spouse every day. And if you're married, you're probably laughing at that because... You know, how many people actually do that? And it's a wrong expectation to have. So, did I get disappointed when the time came and it didn't happen the way I wanted it to? Um, maybe I've had expectations in the past of, okay, uh, maybe the kids will go away for the weekend to their grandmothers and I'll have time alone with my wife. So when it came about in which, you know, I would have time alone with my wife, she would become busy. And so I would, I, if I allowed it, um, my expectations were hurt and my feelings were hurt because then I would think, uh, that I'm not important enough to be alone with. So you could see how expectations can damage you if you allow them to. It can not only damage you, it can damage somebody else if you're reacting from the flesh. Now, we pre-plan pre how our day will go, and when it doesn't go as planned, we get angry. And I already touched on that. Now... As a question to you, what unrealistic expectations are you putting on people personally? Um, I've had it with my spouse and before we married. If I didn't receive a text from her, then I would think that she doesn't love me. And it's unrealistic. I mean, we can't put that on people. I mean, not saying that to hear I love you is wrong. But what if somebody becomes so wrapped up in their day and they get so busy that they can't express that to you? And why should they express it in love? I mean, we can't be so sensitive to think that we need to receive a text from somebody in, to know that we're loved. We you know we need to be fully complete in God. You know, and understand who we are in God as God's children and be completely, you know, fulfilled in his love, you know, to where we don't need to hear that. Another example I think about is uh, an unrealistic expectation is for your spouse or your partner to remember things. Um birthdays, plans, whatever it is, you need to think to yourself, am I being unrealistic in this expectation? Um, another unrealistic expectation I've had personally is let's say I'm up in my room and my spouse is in another room 
And I'm thinking to myself, well, my, if my spouse really loved me, they, they would be in the same room with me. And so when they didn't, then I would personally hold a grudge. I would allow bitterness to come in. And then I would distance myself from my spouse. So then I, when I'm around them, they'd ask, what's wrong? I would say nothing because that's my defense mechanism. That's how I would deal with things. And my spouse didn't do anything wrong, so why should I punish her for something that I'm dealing with personally? It was no fault of her own. Why should she apologize for something that I have pre-planned in my mind and I have set up in my mind? So it's not her fault at all. It's mine for pre-planning something. It's my fault for having an expectation and that being unrealistic. Um... Now, I would say it would be a different thing if your your spouse promised, hey, I'd be, I'm going to be up in the room with you. Something happens, you need to find out from them what happened. If they got busy, that's one thing. If they forgot, that's another. So, you know, you need to work it out the way you need to work it out. But I'm talking about, like, if you haven't talked with your spouse at all, and you're having an unrealistic expectation for them to come up in your room, and you're setting them up to fail. That's where the problem is. Um, you can set yourselves up through different examples like this needlessly for rejection to come in. You allow then the enemy to question the love of others. And that's not what we can do. We don't want to put an unnecessary um, um, issue between you and your brother, you and your spouse, you and your friend. Um, so watch that you don't set yourself up or others, you know, needlessly for rejection to come in. Um, one sec, you know, and as Christians, you know, we are not exempt from any hurts in this world, no matter how much we know Christ, but it's God that helps us to deal with these issues that rise. I had already touched on this, but, um, if you're setting an unrealistic expectation on somebody and it doesn't come about the way you want it to, then you can allow the enemy to come in and speak to you and cause you to question the love of others. And maybe you, in your pride, would think, well, I'm more holy than they are. I love more than they are. They're not loving as much as I love them. So, you know, that's, it's not right. And it, it's something that we need to really watch doing. Now, Satan knows if, if we've dealt with rejection and self-worth in our past. He knows what caused it. He knows what can trigger it. So, I had listed a few examples down. Um, one second, let me reread through them. Okay, so in these examples, they are listed um, like a cause and effect kind of thing. Um, I list down in order of what could happen in that order of when a failed expectation can come in or when rejection can start or issues of self-worth. Um, so, number one, we pre-plan in our minds what will happen. Um, so maybe you have a plan during the day of what you want to happen with you and your spouse. In these plans, possibly, is our self-worth and our expectation on a person or persons. Now, when they don't happen the way we have pre-planned, we judge the person as unloving. Lastly, we get angry then and distance ourselves. Now, I'm not speaking of you. Maybe it's happened with you. But I'm speaking personally about what has happened in my life and the times of re when rejection has hit and the issues of what I feel that come afterwards. Now, I'll give you a few examples 
personally of how rejection has come in my own life. Um, let's see. Um, my friend and I were hanging out a few years back. And he, he received a call from a few of our friends. And he was invited over there to hang out with them. Now, I don't believe that they knew I was there with him. I don't believe he said that I was. I don't remember. But since he was invited, the thought came in that he, they care about him more than me. So when that thought came in, then the enemy jumped on that and said, you don't have any friends. And so he started making me feel worse. And my rejection was apparent to my friend. And he said, why don't you just come? I said, no, because they invited you and not me. And he was like, oh, come on, man. And so we can see how an example of rejection can come. Now, it's how we deal with it that's another thing. I mean... If they knew that I was there with him and they they wanted him over me, you know that you know that's a different issue itself. I mean, what could you really do in an example like that? I mean, maybe you can go to them and say, "Hey, did I do anything that has offended you?" You know, in which you invited him and not me. Or, you know, you can just stop the thoughts where they come. When they come in, you say, "Okay, he got invited. That's cool." Well, I'll just, you know, think of something to do. So, you know, there's different ways we can handle it so that we don't let rejection come in. Um, if we can get to that place to where, you know, we we can deal with those issues. You know, I, I recall what, when Jesus with it was in the garden, um, of Gethsemane. One second. No, he wasn't in the garden. <clears throat> he was up, in, I believe, in the upper room with his disciples. And Peter said that if everyone leaves you, I won't leave you. And Jesus said that when the cock crows three times, you will have denied me. And he said, you all will lose hope and, you know, desert me. But I am not alone. The Father's with me. So Jesus was comfortable in the Father in himself to where he, that's all he needed was just him and the Father. Not saying that he doesn't love us, but his he doesn't feel rejection. He doesn't feel issues of self-worth because he's fully complete in the Father. He's allowed the Father to deal with any kind of issues of abandonment, possibly, or whatever it may be. Jesus has already worked through that. So, when his disciples left him, he didn't feel rejection. He, he loved them. And he understood that man is frail. Man has issues that he's dealing with and hurts. So, if we can get to that place ourselves to where we can allow God to deal with our issues, like in my example with my friend, I could have taken it a better way. You know, I could have said, okay, that's cool that he's being invited. I'll just figure out something to do instead of getting all upset about it. But, you know, we're all in a, a process with God to where we're learning and becoming more like Christ. So issues like this can happen. So what do we do with this whole expectation area? If you're placing expectations on people, then stop. Do so once your mind starts to, number one, pre-plan. Save this, save yourself from any issues of hurt and rejection and save others. Don't pre-plan at all. When you have a tendency to pre-plan something, then just don't do it. Um, now, I'm not saying that you can't plan something with your spouse, but... You know, maybe in the corner of your mind, think about how, you know, come up with something as well. Don't 
don't ingrain it in or engrave it in stone or you know solidify your plan make it to where your your plan can easily easily be broken if something happens i mean whatever it can be in which you don't set yourself up for disappointment in others um by doing this you can save yourself and others any kind of needless hurt so if you're you're planning something with your spouse or your girlfriend or whatever it is realize that events can come up and change those plans so don't get upset if that happens um now let's say in the, in the example of receiving text from your spouse or in my example of you're in one room your spouse is in another and you're ex, you're placing expectation on them to come be with you well what you expect for people to do for you take the initiative and do for them if you expect your wife to come be with you get up and be with them if you expect your spouse to text you you know and express their love to you then take the initiative and express your love to your spouse you know don't always expect them to come and do that because we are all frail we all have hurts that we're dealing with and we can't expect something of somebody if you know if they have you know their own issues of hurt um lastly ask god what he wants you to do for them um i recall before i married my wife before i started dating her in the past i had tendencies of acting out on my hurt with the person that i liked and if i would have done that with my spouse through my issues i would have lost her so instead i asked god to um guide me and everything and how to talk to her and different things like that and it caused us to grow closer together so it is possible you know ask god what you can do for your spouse for your girlfriend for your boyfriend for your friend or whoever it may be you know and um whatever we can do to keep um expectations far away um I believe that we need to get to that place of expectancy, not expecting something that we pre plan in our minds. God sees us from a place of expectancy. If we're dealing with, you know, hurt, rejection, you know, different sin issues, God doesn't have a pre plan in our mind. And when we fail him, then he gets upset with us. He doesn't do that. But he knows when we're going to finally conquer something, whether sin or whatever it is. So I'm going to end it here. I pray that this video has blessed you. And if you're dealing with expectations with people, try and learn not to put expectations. And, uh, you know, it can really save yourself and others from hurt. So I'm going to end here. Thanks for watching. God bless you.